Okay, um, so welcome to each one of you. Let's pray and we'll get started for this part of this class. Um, I would like to request Simon to please lead me there. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for most of you. Thank you for helping me provide a process. Lord Jesus, uh, I surrender this class to the other hands, Lord Jesus. Lord, uh, teach us, guide us, and Lord Jesus, help us to understand more and more from the world, Lord Jesus. Thank you for that, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the hands of Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Well, so, um, uh, we will be starting about authority, we will be starting about power, we will be starting about what authority means, what power means, how to use it in a practical sense. And I've been saying that as we create not just understanding, but also applying this authority, uh, we are in a better place to represent God. And that was a different well, especially as believers, right? Because we have been given with authority and power by God, and uh, we need to walk in that authority. Otherwise, what happens? Uh, it's a defeated. Sometimes we say that defeated Christian life, victorious Christian life. Uh, so our desire is that more and more we can live a victorious Christian life. We already have the victory. We can manifest that victory in our day-to-day -day lives. So with that perspective, we are learning about the different subjects and topics and, you know, that, that we are discussing. So today, we will try to understand uh, more about Satan and the demons. So who is Satan? Who are the demons? Uh, that's a question that a lot of people have. And what does the Bible have to say about Satan? So in the Bible, we have uh, passages that talk about the beginning. In the beginning, Genesis. So in the beginning is whose beginning? The beginning of the, um, the created world, the way the Bible describes it. Then you will read, right? Genesis chapter 1, Genesis chapter 2. However, <clears throat> when God created that garden, there was a serpent who came and tried to deceive Adam and Eve. We know uh, that the, the Bible teaches us that there is an enemy uh, of God who is working against God. And after he tried deceiving and he was successful, we were, the earth got corrupted with sin. So he already existed. So even though we know that in the beginning, we are noticing that Satan existed. So he was there before the so-called beginning of the world. Got it? Uh, now, beginning is not something that we will talk about for God because God has no beginning, He has no end. Okay, He is eternal. That said, so that beginning doesn't apply to him to God. But the world has a beginning. Satan also has a beginning. Why? Because He's a created being. Who is God? He is eternal. He's God. Created being? No, he is the creator. But what about Satan? He is a created being. So there was a beginning. Okay? Where, where did this beginning start? So we don't really uh, see things recorded in a very systematic way about Satan and demons and all. However, we have certain passages of scripture where there is revelation, God has given revelation uh, to you know, the inspired writers about the origin of Satan and the demons. So from there, we get some understanding. Now, you see, there are many other, you may want to call it, um, not gaps, but there are things that are not addressed. 
like we we know god created man in his own image we know he created man in the dust of the earth but how did god create satan so we did he use something we have all these questions but for whatever reason the bible doesn't give us answers so it's not a gap but it is that god wanted to reveal certain things to us he has revealed now we you know we can wonder and we can ask certain questions it's not wrong to ask you know additional questions but in an unhealthy way going deep into the things that we cannot find specific answers to uh it's not helpful because the bible has it, it's silent on many of uh, the questions that we may have but there are people who ask so many questions but the bible does have scriptures for us to get the exact answers to those questions and we can find answers from the word of god or uh, we can sort of associate with scripture and come up with an understanding but then there are many unsaid unknown things there's no point going deep into that because we may never find the answers okay so what what am i saying now there is there are a few things that are said about the origin of satan we get an idea from there and that in in many ways is good enough for us to continue our quest for victorious christian life okay so there may not be a, a reason why you have to go so deep and pull out everything there what time did they live what happened to set that and you no know, formal teaching or the theology because there are many theologies there are many teachings that exist but we cannot be substantiated with the scriptures so we have to be very careful okay so what are some passages where um, you know we find details about the origin of Satan. Uh, we we know that uh, okay. Even things like uh, creation, Moses, God gave him. Nobody saw how God created, but through the Holy Spirit, the revelation was given for Moses to record all those things. And similarly, when we look at uh, a passage in Isaiah. we will we will get some revelation isaiah was given that revelation uh, uh, about same and then even ezekiel there's another passage that we will look at so before that prabhu has a question prabhu go ahead you want to ask something or was that by mistake okay so prabhu is saying audio is not clear could you what exactly is it about how about the others how about the others um, on the online class are you having the same problem okay then the others are seeing echo Okay, cool. okay. We'll we'll try to connect. Please give me a moment. Thank you for pointing this out, uh, everyone. We will try to fix it. Uh, yes. Is, is any better? Any better? Still, or still echo? Any better? Okay, uh, so it's fine here. How about the online students? Are you comfortable? Ah, okay, it's fine. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Okay, let's let's cut. So, uh, Isaiah chapter fourteen. Isaiah chapter fourteen. Um, over here, verses two twenty five. Uh, talk about Satan, and uh, we won't read all 
all the verses because it has to be quite long there. So here there is a description of the fall of the king of Babylon. Okay. But though it talks about the king of Babylon, there, there are these comparisons. So it's talking about the king of Babylon. However, uh, there are, you see, the kingdoms here on the earth, in a way, you would see that there are parallel, parallel, um, you know, like authority figures in the demonic realm. Okay, which are referred to uh, with the same name. For example, you remember when we studied in the book of Daniel, we said the prince of Persia, the prince of Greece, they were hindering the prayers of Daniel in the, um, like in, in the um, heavens. So, second heavens. So, who is the prince of Persia, prince of Greece? They should be on earth, right? The real princess should be human beings. But what's happening? The Bible helps us understand that the demonic realm, they, they have these sort of parallel rulers assigned to maybe those territories. And that's why they're called by that name. So here we're reading about the king of Babylon, but it's actually talking about Satan, okay? the king of Babylon. So let's read from verse 12 verse 12 when it will uh, come to talking directly about lucifer so could somebody uh, read it out a little long the passage so that someone can begin that would be helpful you want to read the word isaiah 14 verse 12. How you unpacked the coming? You became in the nation, for you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven, I will exalt my throne above the stars of all. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, I will be like the most high. Yet you shall go down to the shore. To the lower steps of the field. Those who see you will gaze at you and consider you, saying, Is this the man who made the earth tremble? Who took kingdoms? Who made the world and a wilderness and destroyed its cities? Who did not open the house of his prisoner? All the kings of the nation, all of them sleep in glory, everyone in his own house. But you are cast out of your grave like an abominable branch, like a garment of those who are slain, thus through with a sword, who go down to the stone of the pit, like a corpse uh, trodden under the You can read till 25. You will not be charged with them in Quirin. Because you have destroyed your land and claimed your people, the fruit of the evil shall never be named. Prepare slaughter for his children because of the iniquity of their fathers, lest they rise up and possess the land and fill the place of the world in cities. Um, they yeah. don't destroy it. For, for I will rise up against them, save the Lord of the house, and cut off from a blow the day and remnant and offspring and posterity, save the Lord. I will also make it a uh, position for the poor king, for the time, and rush it on muddy water. I will sweep it with the bloom of destruction, save the Lord of the house. The Lord of hosts has sung, saying, Surely as I have thought, so it shall come to pass, and as I have proposed, so it shall stand, that I will break the Assyrian in my land and own my mountains, spread him underfoot. Then he, his yoke shall be removed from them, and his burden removed from their shoulders. Thank you so much, Shalom. Quite a long passage there. Um, 
but you notice here it, it's talking about the anger of god over earthly it seems like you know some earthly princes and all um but then very clearly in between there is the reference to uh, lucifer okay the reference to lucifer and uh, how he some of the things that you can grasp here is he was thrown out can, can we can we say that have we seen it here how you are fallen from heaven okay because it says here how you are fallen from heaven so he's thrown out and uh, you have some references to this of him being cast out of heaven again in, in the book of revelation so you know bits and pieces we can pick up from here and there and understand okay so he was cast out uh, from heaven now why was he cast out why why was he thrown out fallen from heaven it says oh lucifer so lucifer is the name and obviously lucifer he was one of the angels so that is why he was in heaven because you know god created him as a as a an angel and uh, we will see later on that he was not just any angel but he was very blessed very blessed it also talks here as son of the morning how you are cut down to the ground and then it goes on to uh, say about his attitude you who weaken the nations for you have said in your heart and that entire next uh, section there says uh, he was trying to claim equality and even greatness above god i will ascend i will sit on the throne so what are we understanding so far here's an angel by the name of lucifer he had other names also son of the morning he fell from heaven but he was swollen with pride okay pride in against god and so what is the kind of uh, response that god has towards this angel anger wrath okay so that much we have picked up about lucifer now let's read on we will look at another passage let's go to ezekiel ezekiel um chapter 20 28 ezekiel 28 uh we we could actually meditate on verses 1 through 19 uh, but what we will do is let's look at uh, verses from 12 ezekiel 28 verses 12 onwards Son of man, take up a benediction for the king of Babylon, and say to him, "The says the Lord God, you were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, and garden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. The sardius stones and diamond filled with olives and jasper, sapphire." The foolish and bitter with gold, the combination of your fingers and eyes was prepared for you on the day you were created. You were the anointed child, God's who covers. I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked there and walked in the midst of fiery stones. You were perfect in your made from the day you were created. In infinity was found in you. By the abundance of your living, you become filled with violence within, and you sin. Therefore, I cast you as a profane thing. Out of the mountain of God, and I destroy you, O company of cherub, from the midst of the fire stone. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I laid before thee that they might hear that you, you defied God, sent centuries, sent centuries by the multitude of your iniquities, by the iniquity of your trading. Therefore, I have brought you, brought fire from your midst, 
and I reborn you and I bring you to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all who saw you. All who knew, all who knew you among the people are astonished at you. You have become a horror and shall be no more forever. Uh, thank you again thank you for reading that reading that long passage. So you see description, right? Description about Satan and it's helping us know um, who this Lucifer is and what is his standing in heaven. So from what we read, it seems like you know how God is saying you, you were made to perfection. So he was one of those angels who was made gloriously. And there are other things that are mentioned about him. You know, we, we see um, verse 12, it says, yeah, you were the seed of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. So full of wisdom, meaning uh, could think, could, um, could understand, could make good choices, beauty, uh, referring to you know, he is exposed to, uh, when we say beauty, it could also kind of refer to art, right? Like uh, all the good imagination, those kind of things. So he is well versed in, in all those matters. What else is so great about him? You know, we see wisdom. Yeah, wisdom is something I, I mentioned. Verse uh, 13, it also says that... You were in Eden, the garden of in every precious stone wall was your covering. And then, you know, all these stones are mentioned. The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. So he had everything. Precious stones. So if he has precious stones, then what? Very rich, you know, resourceful, wealthy uh, is, is a term that we can use. So he was familiar with all these things with uh, wisdom, with art, beauty, with um, now, you know, we, we just talked about wealth uh, and also other things. He was given timbrels. So what's all that? Timbrels and all this for music. So as a worshipper, he had the instruments he needed. Uh, and he was obviously, he had a part to play in worship in heaven. And that's what we understand. So music. He, he, it's not like he doesn't know music. He was like the chief up in heaven who knew music and worship very, very well. Okay, what else? What else uh, can we know about uh, Lucifer? Well, verse the music, and then verse 14 terms is as you were anointed, cherub who covers, I established you. Uh, you were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of fiery stones. Wow, you know, he had a, a great place in the presence of God, mountain of God, before God, anointed, okay, meaning privileged, favor, God's favor was upon uh, Lucifer. Then, of course, uh, 28 verse 16 says, trading, iniquity of your trading. So, trading shows us that uh, business. He did something, some trading, something he did. Now people ask the question, what trading? Uh, we can give some answers, but exact answer, I don't know. Because see, there are many things which, which is not mentioned. So then how to give the answer for those questions? So that's what I'm trying to tell all of us. There, there can be some, to some level, we can answer those unknowns, but not way deep. If we keep going deep, it's unnecessary. Okay, so we know that he was well versed as far as business and those kind of things are concerned. What else? Uh, ruler of all nations. We saw that Isaiah 14 12, you rule the nations, it said. So, why am I pointing out these specific things? See, because Satan, okay, uh, he fell from heaven. Where is he now? He's on the earth. Because obviously, in the Garden of Eden, he went and then God uh, finally cursed him. So he's still here on the earth. Jesus talks so much about, you know, the devil and all that. He's still here on the earth. From scriptures, we know that he's defeated. And we are going to study that in, in our uh, authority class. He's defeated. But at the same time, there is a timing at which God is going to uh, put him. Like, you know, he, he will be banished. You want to use that word forever. 
he will be removed from our from uh, uh, us or, or the people of god but until such time he's still around and while he's still around what are some of the things we know see he can he can influence all these areas when we say wisdom can he influence education yeah bible says he was very brilliant full of wisdom so he can influence the area the field of education can he influence art can there be certain art forms that are influenced by the demonic yeah it says beauty elvers he knows art you know different things wealth what about wealth can he influence the field of business he can he was very wealthy from what we see all the resources uh, that god gave him it's not little business you know wealth money he knows about all these things so what are we trying to do we're trying to understand okay so these are the qualities this is the nature of satan he he is not somebody who doesn't know or was not exposed what about worship he knew he was right in the presence of god anointed worshiping so he knows very well so what does it tell us we have to be alert okay not to create fear or anything but we we can understand his craftiness when he know when we know his uh, sort of you know nature his his background is exposure so he knows all these things worship yeah he he understands worship what else um yeah rulership rulership government uh, you know ruling over people reigning over people politics see he understands all these things because uh, he has some exposure yeah and he was perfect at one point he was perfect but what went wrong what does the bible say what went wrong in satan's uh, situation yeah see it says until iniquity was found in you god created him perfect but you notice that pride right pride is the issue where he he was not happy with how god created him he wanted to become greater than god so what corrupted him what it says iniquity corrupted him god made him perfect he so he was soul in the pride and that pride corrupted the perfection of god in his life which is why god got angry and he had to be thrown out so a uh, pride you could also say uh, something like um, you know deception deception because how could he even think that he can become greater than god he is just a created being god is uncreated god is eternal if you understand who god is you never even go to you know uh, compare yourself with god but deception where somewhere in himself he felt that's a possibility if god can be god why can i not be god so deception he deceived himself and we will see later on that you know he's he is uh, named with his qualities one of the things he continues to do today is deception he tried to deceive eve okay so these are all his tactics deception he himself got deceived and now he's trying to deceive uh, you know people who are created in the image of god so pride uh, and uh, deception these are all things that actually uh, you know caused him to um, to be corrupted uh and we see in other passages verse 20 uh, verse 17 of chapter 28 says your heart was filled up because of your beauty so you were very proud i have everything and so great you you corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor i cast you to the ground i laid you before kings that they might gaze at you so it's showing a rebellion pride deception uh, rebellion right against god and that kind of an attitude he had towards god 
And you know, there are other passages that show that he took angels with him and he was cast on the earth. So he did not come alone, but he led a rebellion, not just him, there were other deceived angels with him. So when you read Revelation chapter 12, uh, we will understand that. Um, so we won't go through the passages. Revelation chapter 12 tells us there was a war in heaven. See, in the, in, in the Bible, no, sometimes you're reading one passage. A little bit talks about the natural world. A little bit talks about the heavenly kingdom. A little bit talks about the future. A little bit talks about the present. A little bit talks about the past. So Revelation chapter 12 is a little bit, it's like that. Uh, it's talking about many things that will take place. But at the same time, there is a small section there that captures what happened. There was a rebellion in heaven. It captures that. So from all these passages, we understood what kind of a creature Satan was, how he thought, and uh, he had a set of angels with him, and he was cast out right, from heaven with one third of the angels, and both him and uh, the angels are here on the earth. Those angels who were cast down with Lucifer are the ones that we refer to as demons. Okay, who are they? All this Lucifer and his whole gang, they are all angels. But we also use the term fallen angels. Okay, fallen angels, demons, and that is their origin. That is their origin. Now, just think about this. The creatures that God created. So you have uh, uh, the angels that God created and man also God created. Did you notice in Isaiah chapter 14, it said, uh, Satan said to himself, I will ascend. I will become greater than God. I will sit. So God gave the angels free will. Till now we talked about free will for man. But even angels, God gave free will. That is why Lucifer was able to say, I will. You need a will for that. You need a decision. So he made a choice. He made a decision that I will. And God never stopped it. Has God given free will to all the angels? He has given free will. So those other one third of the angels who were cast out to the earth, they also used their free will and they joined the rebellion. They joined uh, Lucifer. And see, God didn't force. God didn't force. He said, okay, your choice. Sovereign God. He didn't say, oh, how could you? No. You made a choice. Go, go with it. Right? So that is how Satan and his demons rebel. They have a free will and they have been cast on to the earth. Uh, what are a few more things which we can understand about Satan? Uh, you know, we, we understand that they have gained rulership of the world. I told you that I, when, we, when we said that in Genesis, uh, God gave the earth to man and said, you know, you have dominion, you be fruitful and multiply. But when we read the account of Jesus in the wilderness, then what is Satan saying? I will, if you bow down and worship me, I will give you the kingdoms. So remember we said a transfer took place. When sin came into the world, Satan got rulership of the earth. Okay, And that is why Satan and the demons can influence. They can influence because they now have the rulership of, of uh, the earth in many ways. And this began in the garden, the first time when uh, Adam and Eve disobeyed God. And now Satan has access into people's lives. So that's why, remember we ask all these questions uh, when people are suffering, when there are uh, natural calamities, how can God do this, how can God? But God is not the only one who is in charge. In the sense, he is sovereign, we know that, but it's like a owner and a tenant. If the house is given to a tenant, the owner owns the house, but if the house is messy, if you know it has overgrown flats outside, and you know it's a it's not painted, is it the owner's fault? No, it's the tenant's fault who has been given the 
in charge of the house for that duration. In the same way, in the world, a man has to take responsibility because we are the people who have been given the stewardship to take care of the earth. We are here to represent God. At the same time, there is some interference. What is that interference? Satan is also here. He is also creating trouble. He is also putting sickness. He is also oppressing people. So for everything to say, how can God do this? How is it fair to always blame God? If you know something goes wrong, people immediately, why did God do this? See, God is sovereign, but stewardship, interference of Satan, all these things are there on the earth. And we need to understand that. Now, one more point I will make about um, Satan, and then we can pause. You can ask any questions if you have. Uh, the next point is when we read uh, in the book of Jude, okay, Jude, Jude 1, uh, there's only one chapter there, but verse 9, uh, basically but there we see one of the angels, okay, uh, he wants to speak against Satan, but he says, may the Lord rebuke you. He doesn't put down Satan, or put down in the sense, doesn't curse Satan, okay, may the Lord rebuke you. So, one more principle, you, you could call it a principle, that we notice is, yes, Satan is a defeated enemy, and uh, we, we have dominion, we have authority over uh, Satan, the demonic world, but it doesn't give us a license to um, sort of, you know, demean or uh, speak destructive, like put down, put down Satan in, in a... Uh, in an in a irresponsible way because there are um, there's a certain way of dealing with things so heavenly beings we find that even an angel is not speaking against another angel okay instead uh, that angel Michael he says may the Lord rebuke whatever authority I have with that authority I will work with you but beyond that what needs to be done to you may the Lord do it so basically, it just shows us we should know our boundaries and not try to uh, you know, behave like, oh, uh, we are over Satan and all that. Yeah, we have conquered Satan and all, but I hope you're trying to understand what I'm, what I'm saying, right? So we have conquered, we have the victory, but simply, you know, uh, bad mouthing, speaking ill or demeaning, that sort of, uh, sometimes very carelessly people, people talk. So we shouldn't do that because we don't see that in scripture. That's my singular point there. Okay, so let's let's pause here. We will understand a little more about Satan, demons, their nature. Uh, but any questions so far or any thoughts? Oh, wow, hands are just going up. Uh, even if you have questions, please do post it to the online students. Uh, yes, let's take the questions. We go to Prince first. Yeah, Prince. Okay, if it's difficult, you say it, I'll repeat the question. Okay. Yeah, good question. So Vince is asking, see, God is a revolution, meaning he knows everything. Everything. Um, so did he know that there will be a rebellion? And even though he knew, why did he create? See, God knew. Okay, but uh, he went ahead. Same thing with man, no? He also said, but he went ahead. We are all still here. So God knows, uh, but then he has a way of working. He doesn't. He doesn't. He didn't uh, stop himself on creating because something might go wrong later on and in a way you can you can you can see that god is like a redeemer restorer isn't it so even though things went wrong that there, there is an option jesus and uh, to restore the world world and redeem mankind so i think god had another plan also There's no redemption for the fallen ones. See, from scripture, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know, want to comment on that. But knowing the nature of God, 
I am saying this, this is not in the Bible. I am saying this. I feel that before the beginning, I'm sure God would have given Satan opportunity. I am sure God would have given enough opportunity uh, and uh, uh, you know options to both Lucifer and his team. But if he has been thrown out, my feeling is he went beyond ever. So that is my suggestion. I feel so. Because he that is in God's nature, no? So I'm sure he has he must have given chances. I don't know. Yeah, I hope. Is that okay? Thanks, Prince. Yes, Rimal, you have some questions. In the beginning, when God is created the earth, so is there a time where and maybe heaven is there and heaven is also there? And if we have yes. a level like that, why God did it? Then you said in that it is true. And why God uh, cast it in on the earth? Mm -hmm. Okay, why did he cast him to the earth? <laughs> okay. Uh, so, see, God created the heavens and the earth. When you, you read about heaven, I think Pastor also explained that day, that we, we refer to uh, many different things. So God created the heavens and the earth in Genesis. Our understanding from there could be the universe, the seed, uh, you know, the, the perceived universe that God created with the galaxies and the stars and all of that. So we term that also as heaven. That also as heaven. But the place where God and the heavenly beings the, or the angelic beings dwell, that's also known as heaven. So you see, there are many, many, uh, heaven is not only one, but we are understanding that there are more passages, more uh, places with the same term heaven. So my answer is yes, the heaven where God lived and all existed before only. That is why when you say in the beginning, it's the beginning of the created earth, the created universe, and all that. So that heaven is what we are referring to. So definitely the heaven where God was, angels were, that already existed. Now your next question, hell. When was hell created? Frankly, I don't know the answer. But I know that hell was created for Satan. Okay, It was created for Satan and his demons. Uh, why God did not send him directly to hell, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. If anybody knows, please tell. <laughs> okay, Ezekiel 28. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So is it like, like even uh, the garden before the seeds happened before God made it before God? No, see uh, how we'll interpret this, you are indeed in sounds like you know present tense at least in the English. So we have to interpret scripture based on scripture. What does scripture tell us in the beginning? God created the heavens and the earth, and then he made man. He put him in the garden. That is our first reference to Eden. So that was the time Eden was made. Then why is God saying you are in Eden? It's though it's it is in it sounds like present tense, that is the connection. Basically, what uh, here it's coming out in the revelation of Ezekiel is Satan was on the earth. Yes. See, unless earth is created, how he can be on earth? So before that, he was not on earth. But once earth was created, he was on the earth. That's what it's saying. You're in the earth. You're in Eden. So that's our, that's what we can see. Satan was on the earth. He's still on the earth. From other references, we know he's still there.
Okay, <laughs> it's too heavy, is it? Okay, some some point here on the comments. Lucifer, uh, Lucifer's fall. Just a text is too tiny for me. Lucifer's fall had already taken place in Eden uh, when he tempted Eve. It refers to him as a serpent. Mm. Genesis 1, it says, God created the heavens and the earth. So by Genesis 3, he was cast down. Okay, so Nina is saying by Genesis 3, he was cast down. Uh, Nina, what I would say is, the earth was created only in Genesis 1. And we have reference that Satan was on the earth. Okay, um, from the book of Genesis. But... God created the heavens and the earth. So by Genesis 3, he was cast down. No, that I don't think that would be that would be true. I think he was cast down, or meaning um, he was removed from heaven much earlier. He was removed from heaven much earlier. But then in Genesis, we see that he comes, I mean, he is here on the earth. Okay, so that much I, I know from scripture. Uh, but to say that the timing, he fell when the earth was created, I don't think that would be, I mean, I, I don't see that in scripture. So is that okay, Nina? Or do you, do you differ on that view? So fall of Lucifer happened before creation. So he was already operating on earth. No, he was cast down. That point I can make. Earth was created in Genesis 1. And he was operating, he was operating on earth from the time the earth was created. So where was he in that interim period when God uh, he fell and earth was not there? Where was Satan? I don't know. That answer is one. Wasn't he a created being? Yes, he is a created being. But creation did not happen only in Genesis 1. No, In Genesis 1, we see God created the heavens and the earth. Now, this other heaven where God is, where the angels are, that existed before him. It already existed. So in that heaven, there are created beings already in the form of angels and you know whatever other creatures. So yeah, I hope that answers your question. Okay, okay, she's fine. All right, so we've uh, run out of time, but any burning questions that have to be answered right now? Yes, I have so many. Why so many names of the other? Okay. It's just a description. So it helps us uh, understand what he does. That's why. Like deceiver, accuser. We'll see all that. Deceiver, accuser, liar. So it, it just shows his activities. What is the meaning of devil? Actually, I haven't researched that. Okay. I'll, I'll just... Uh, See, just just wait. Hold on, hold on. Okay. So when we look at uh, the words for devil, okay, one. Uh, answer says demon. Okay, in the Hebrew. In the Greek, what does it say? Greek. It says demon, supernatural spirit of bad nature. Um, other translations say false accuser, slanderer, uh, hurtful, evil, in effect or influence. So. These are all the descriptions of that term, which they have used for Satan, but in English, 
it is translated as a devil. So, like a spirit of bad nature, um, slanderer, accuser. Lucifer, Lucifer is a name, Prince. I haven't researched that also. So, Lucifer, what does it mean? Okay, let us look it up right away. Does it have a meaning? Okay, yeah. So, it gives us something. Uh, it comes from the Hebrew word called he, he lal, he lal. Um, It means the morning star. So it's a good name. Lucifer is a good name, but obviously nobody wants to keep that name anymore. Hmm. Yeah, I think that there is a reference. Yeah. See, it's just a name. So it's okay. We're not we're not attributing uh deity. As you would have learned in Christology, we're not attributing deity, but it's something which um, you know says that he's a good creation, and that's why God gave him the name Morning Star. So I don't think there's anything wrong with that. We're all fine. <laughs> okay, fine. So with that, let us uh, wrap up the class today. Uh, let's pray and close. I want to invite uh, somebody from the online class to please lead in prayer. Just unmute and pray. We can hear you here. Shall I? Yes, yes. Uh, Go ahead. Father God, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you have given us an understanding from your word, Lord, of all that we have to know, Father God. Father, you are a God of wisdom, Lord, and all that we want to know, Lord, thank you for teaching us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to understand your ways from your word, Lord. Increase our understanding, Lord, even as we sit in those online classes, Lord, and meditate from your word. Father, I pray, Lord, whatever that we have to take in our heart, Lord, and carry it, I pray that you will carve in each of our hearts, Lord, so that we will have your understanding, grow in your understanding and wisdom, Lord, and we will walk in your ways, Lord. In Jesus' mighty, matchless name we pray. Amen. Uh, thank you, Brother Jenkins. Thank you, everyone, for being part of this class. We will connect again next week. Uh, please do go over your notes. If you have more questions, feel free. You can ask. And uh, it will be nice to discuss all that before we proceed further. Okay, so God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Bye for now. Thank you.